Hi, this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, founder of The Complete Herbal Guide. And today I'm very excited because we have a wonderful guest with us today. Her name is Lois Hollis. And Lois was dying at the age of 55 and thriving now at 78 because she learned how to release shame and guilt from her life. Lois was born in Baltimore, Maryland at 1943, and she earned her RN from St. Joseph Hospital and her BSN from the University of Pennsylvania. Despite of her many accomplishments, her abusive childhood traumas began to outweigh her energetic lifestyle. She succumbed to guilt-ridden depression, heart and liver disease at 30 years of migraines, headaches, and structural deformities that she had experienced throughout her life. Her physicians told her that she could not live past 50 years old. After 10 years of unsuccessful therapies, she turned to holistic health. She has now recognized that shame and guilt were the main offenders of her health and well-being. And Lois is here to tell us her story and to tell us what she had experienced, what she does, and how she came over this. Lois, tell everybody a little about your story and about yourself. And, you know, this is a very interesting story that really captured my eyes when I was reading about it. It is a very riveting story uh, to me. And I didn't realize how riveting it is until I, I'm reaching 78 and I'm rollerblading around the skating ring and people <laughs> say how old are you because I'm with my grandson right and I'm not the mother I'm the grandmother <laughs> <laughs> so anyway um I've always been energetic I've always been um, a trailblazer when someone isn't doing something I just go in and do it I started the first kidney hemodialysis unit in the country at um in Philadelphia so for me to fall down into depression, into the point of suicide, is way out of, you would think, my league. Right. But I kept on saying, I just haven't found the right person to help me. And with that, I guess you would call that hope. Right. But I, I didn't, you know, we're talking, you know, a long time ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, podcasts weren't there. And you know, you were really on your own. Yes. But I had this incredible feeling that I'm just looking for the right place. And as a nurse all my life, you would go to regular medicine and they just gave me more pills, Vicodin and, you know, and everything else. And yeah. Like, this is not working because I'm very sensitive and, you know, I was busy. And yeah, so I just threw all the pills down the toilet <laughs> and said, I sat on the floor and I said, dear God, <laughs> yeah, because I can't do this. Right. I don't know what else to do because I'm like, I have three MDs in the family and, you know, they just give you more pills. Anyway, long story short, I found a wonderful chiropractor, healer, shaman person that does incredible work. And he started putting my bones back together and fix my heart sneaking and you know miraculous things I go okay now we're talking right <laughs> but I had the emotional traumas yes of the childhood I was you know beaten my jaw was broken oh my goodness neck was broken um my lungs were um uh, incapacitated because I had scoliosis so bad oh we're wow we're walking like 45 degrees oh and, my goodness yeah so I'm yeah the doctor said you can't make it and they were right but anyway my body was getting better but I still had the emotional traumas so I went to talk therapy like we're talking mm -hmm. and um I didn't want to commit suicide but I was not happy yes and every place I went I there wasn't anything there so I said I'm talking to my emotions instead of talking to therapists right so I said, hi, depression, how are you? And my depression started talking to me. I mean, not like I'm talking to you, but you feel it. It's kind of like- It was a connection, an inter yeah. intuitive connection. So I start healing and I found this black stealth all over. I have this ability to see things. Yes. And I just took it out and I, I got well. And everybody says, Lois, what are you doing? You know, you change, you're happy, you're, you know, not- crippled over and they said can I do what you're doing and I said I guess so so they came to me and they got well too with what I was doing right and they sent their mothers and their grandmothers and their kids and their friends and I said that's I guess what's what I do 
Now explain to the audience exactly what you were doing, like step by step. Like what were you doing to try to heal your yourself and what was working? Like this was working. And um I didn't know that it was so endemic because you know how when you're doing your own journey, you feel like you're a solo person and what yes. you do. Mm, you hide. <laughs> yeah. So, and uh so anyway, I found that nobody was doing what I'm doing. And I said, Well, that sucks. You know, so I'll do it. Right. So that's when I said, I'm a shame, guilt, educated. Like, oh, no, you can never say those words because, oh, oh, oh. So anyway, what I came to learn, and this is what I'm going to tell the foundation. Yeah. Is that shame, guilt, not shame and guilt, because shame, do you know how a coin has a heads and tails? Yes. Mm -hmm. But it's still a nickel. Yes. That's shame, guilt. Okay. Shame on one side, guilt on the other. We have two um, major nervous systems. Okay. Conscious and conscious, right? Right. Shame's on the unconscious and guilt's on the conscious. But it's the same nickel. Right, right. It's the same thing. So that's where we, this is what I want to tell your audience is that it's the same thing. So don't get, oh, shame is bad, guilt is good. No, there's no healthy poison. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> when it's a bad thing, it's a bad thing. Yeah. And that's where we get stuck in our healing because we separate them. Now, why does medicine do that? Because if you have a bacteria in your brain, they call it meningitis. Mm-hmm. If you have the same bacteria, in your, excuse me, bacteria in your heart, they call it carditis. If you have it in your lungs, they call it pneumonia. Right. If it's in your liver, they call it hepatitis. Do you see where I'm going with this? Yes. So that's what medicine does. Right. Okay? But it doesn't help. How does that help you to heal? Right. It doesn't because you get very confused and you get the same antibiotic if you have carditis or meningitis or pneumonia or hepatitis. Right. So I'm like, can we just make it simple? Right. So shame guilt is outside of us it's not normal it's common as we spoke before but it's not normal okay need to backtrack the love energy we all know what love energy is yes mm-hmm. it's but explain to the audience what love energy is so they understand well it just is love that comes to us and then how does love make you feel makes you oh, feel good we're happy you're joyful you're like sure i can do that I can walk on the tightrope. I can swim the channel. I can, you know, I'm just a good person. Right. And I like people. I don't, you know, fight with them. I mean, I can disagree, but I don't fight with them. I don't have that rage. I'm just have love and joy. Yeah. It's kind of a nice feeling, right? Right. Oh, that's the love feeling. Now, everybody has a different way of expressing love. You know, we give presents or we want to give, we want to help, we want to help ourselves, we want to look pretty, you know, that's the love energy. Right. And it's positive. Now, yeah. we have a negative energy. Mm-hmm. It's called shame, guilt energy. Right. Okay, that's why I'm putting it in that category. It's the energy that comes on to us. Like when I say, you know, you're really kind of ugly you know you should change your hair (laughs) those words come to you and when they come to you what do you feel yeah you've been shamed and knocks you down it knocks you down so the words carry the energy yes okay i call them shooting bullets Mm -hmm. it's true and that's why i made a film to show what it looks like so that we know it's a thing now, to make an analogy for everyone to understand, what happens to your computer when you have a computer virus? Gets destroyed. It goes down. It, do, can you see it? The virus itself? No, you cannot see it. Can you see what it does to you? The computer? Well, it's, oh, I can yeah. feel it. It stresses me out. It, it frustrates me. It, it makes me a lot of different emotions. And what does it do to your computer? It destroys the computer unless you fix it somehow. And what do you do? You get a virus removal program. Yeah. You can't say, get off. Fix. Right. Get out of here. No. It don't work, right? You got to display an action, a call <laughs> to action. 
<laughs> yeah, like get this virus out of here. Okay, that's what shame, guilt, energy is. You can't see it, but boy, do you feel it. Yes, you do. So we have to put it in the category that it's like invisible. I call it the invisible monster. Right. And it comes into us by you, the words. And also, oh, you stupid jerk, Lois. Why did you do that? You should have done that instead of that, right? We do that to ourselves, right? Oh, most definitely. We're so good at it. I mean, but that's how the culture trained us. Yes, that's how our culture trained us. And the priests and the religions and the government and the uh, Target stores. Our and whole the, environment. That's how we were Walmart brought up to and think. And our mothers and the fathers. We can't blame anybody. We can only blame shade guilt energy. Yeah. That's all. I mean, because your parents did the same. I mean, we've all suffered with it. Mm -hmm. But we have to identify our enemy. That's yes. our enemy. It's the computer virus. So when the words come into you from your mother, your father, or your boyfriend, <laughs> <laughs> or yourself, you say no. You yes. can say no. Is right. that going to fix everything? No. Right. But it's a first step. It's yes. You say no. Now, what does the energy do like the computer virus does to your computer? It turns your positive, wonderful, joyful emotions to negative ones. Yes. We are already positive. We are already beautiful. We are already loving. But when this virus hits us, our compassion turns to depression. Yes. Our passion turns to anger. Yes. Our intuition, our psychic abilities turn to anxiety. Yes. And so forth. So what would be the logical way to handle this? Get rid of the shame, guilt, and our, our um, negative emotions turn back to positive. Right. So that's what I said. I was like so happy when I figured this out that I didn't have to go to therapy for anxiety and bullying and, and um, uh, suicide and depression and why I can't achieve. It's because of the shame, guilt, energy coming in. It's yeah. like if you have a, um, in your house, if you have, when it rains, you have a flood in your bedroom and a flood in your kitchen and your bathroom. And you have to clean it up and it's all fine. Right. And then it rains again. And you got a flood in your bathroom, in your kitchen, and your bedroom, and you got to clean it all. Right. Wouldn't it be better to fix the hole in the roof? Uh, most definitely. <laughs> it so, would make sense. So that's where I am with shame guilt. Can we just get rid of it? Because I, no matter how many years you spend in therapy for depression, you'll never get rid of it. Because the shame guilt is still bubbling it up. So now that we know it's a thing, when you feel shame, when you feel guilt, what do you do? No. I, what do I feel? Okay, I feel depression. Okay, we can work with depression. Mm -hmm. Depression is a part of us. Right. And hi, depression, how are you? I have another film on that. But we just need to clear the slate here today and say, never, ever be in shame guilt. And if you are, you got to get out. Yes. And can I tell you why? Yes, I'd like to know. Because there's a wonderful person called David Hawkins. He lives in heaven now. But he did an energy scale for each of our emotions. Mm. Okay? Yes. It's very technical. And this is scientific. So you can, it has a number. Right. So you can rely on the number. Mathematics. Right. Enlightenment, you know, the Jesus part is 700,000 mm, wow. seven zero zero <laughs> comma zero 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 with 30 zeros <laughs> okay that's like i can't even go there yeah but it has a demonstration point of how the highest as a human we can achieve spiritual okay then it goes down to joy and love and compassion and it keeps going down like 200,000, 100,000, 50,000, and then at 200, 200, zero, zero, mm -hmm. we have anger, we have hatred, we have hurt, we have anxiety, 
And guess what the last one is? Which one? Shame and guilt. And guess what it comes in at? What? 10. Really? 10. Wow. Now, what is after 10? I don't know. Death. Think of suicide. Yes. What's no. the... So I'm telling you from a mathematical standpoint, just get out of guilt. Yes. You know, if you want to, you can feel regret. You know, regret's okay. Right. You can be depressed. It's okay. Right. You can be anxious. It's okay because then you can work with something. Yes. What can you work with guilt? It's like a it's like a backpack on your shoulder that keeps pressing you down and down and down. And until you let go of it, until you get rid of it, you're you're gonna be burying yourself. Like you said, death is right below. You know, and that's true. That's the truth. So if you went with anything people can learn today is this get a guilt. Now sometimes it's hard. Because you're like so hard on yourself. But you can say, I can feel regret. I regret that I put my money in the stock market because now I lost my money. Right. I'm going to put my money in something else. Yes. So regret is okay. We can feel regret. But we can't be in guilt. Guilt has no solutions. I had a wonderful client come to me a couple of weeks ago who was struggling with intense guilt because she couldn't help her mother heal from alcoholism. Mm. And she passed and her mother passed and she felt even more guilty. And that makes sense. You know, you can't make anybody do what they don't want to do. Right. So she, we decided to use regret instead of guilt. And so with the regret, she had uh, educated many people for the alcoholism and had conferences and programs for them. So her regret led to a solution rather than drowning in guilt. Right. So people say, oh, don't regret. Regret's better than shame. Anything's better than shame and guilt. And some people say, oh, I don't have any friends. Well, call Walmart or Rose or someplace. You, they, they, they always will talk to you and maybe the frequency will change. You just, you just can't be in guilt. Yeah. You can't. It's not okay. It has no solution. And it's shame, guilt. Doesn't matter if you're in shame or if you're in guilt. They're both no good. Right. And you just say no and call your best friend. And if you don't have a best friend, call the store or somebody or they have right. hotlines and you just have to get out. Now also on my website I have I have the ability to write spiritual mm -hmm. spiritual words. And this raises your frequency. It doesn't say one, two, three, do this, that. It's just the reading of the words builds you back up from the guilt. Right, right. So they're free. You just press print and it prints it out. And there's many um, pages to read. So that's what I love. Thank you. I'm gracious for being on your show to tell people this information. Now, the next step is to learn how not to accept guilt from other people right or yourself yeah so from other people you just say no can you say another way right or that's interesting or be funny and say are you kidding me I mean, <laughs> you, whatever you want to do but just say no when yeah. people talk on the phone i just go Ch -ch 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 -ch, give it back give it back now, <laughs> you can't take it on right but a That's lot of people have thin skin. A lot of people suffer from low self-esteem. And when people say those things to them, it could really hurt and, and shame them really bad. Of course, because shame is like a backpack. The more you get, the more you put on. And it doesn't go away. You have to take it and throw it away. Right. Because it's a thing. Yes. It's a thing. It's not a notion that belongs to you. And that's what's so important. And my film shows it as a, remember Dorothy going to the Wizard of Oz? Yes. Mm -hmm. The all and powerful Oz. Yes. And she trembles. Yes. But what does Toto do? He pulls the curtain back. Mm -hmm. And what do we see? 
a little old man, bald and gray, with a big machine making a puff of smoke. And what yes. is the puff of smoke? It's shame, guilt, energy. Right. Good I point. Have, I have been um, told by several hosts they have different names. One person calls it the shame, guilt, leech. Mm-hmm. Which is very symbolic. It, it leeches your power away. It really does. It really does. So you it say no. You. And some people call it the alien invader. Some people call it a vampire. I don't care what you call it. But it's not of you. Yeah. It's not of you. Now, what you can do is our inner critic is our best friend. Mm -hmm. And everybody says, oh, shut up, cut his head off, cut his off. You can't do that. It's part of you. Right. So I want to get to know you. So what do I say? Hi. Mm -hmm. To my inner critic. Now, the inner critic is a protector, but he's living in the age of you being two or three years old. Right. He's living in, in my time would be like 1950, 1960. Right. So I have to say, would you like to come to 2022? Because yeah. I'm an adult now. Right. So you show him, you do a partnership with him, but he doesn't, nobody's talked to him. Right. You have to talk to yourself. And, and that's not really that hard. Yeah. And they change their mind. You don't change your mind. They usually tell you to shut up because you're stupid. But you say, hi, how are you? You just keep on. If I want to be your friend, what do I do? Keep calling you. Keep calling you. Keep calling right. You. Eventually, they know that you are sincere. Yeah. My king, that's what he calls himself, his, used to be my inner critic. But now he helps me find podcasts. So he has a new job. Mm -hmm. His job is to protect me. But now I'm smart enough to know about shame, guilt. And I go, shh, shh, no, no, no. Right. He doesn't have to do that to me. Yes. Because I'm an app. So I'm teaching you. Mm -hmm. And then you're teaching your inner critic. Right. So it's, it's basically you're retraining your brain. You're developing a, you're going, you're listening to your intuitiveness. You are, you are retraining the way you think and you are building sort of like a thick skin where you're not letting those people or those things that once gave you so much guilt to let you hurt you, you know? And, 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 and you can use the analogy of thick skin, but I would say knowledge. Knowledge. Because I am sensitive and I always want to be sensitive. Yes, I find myself very sensitive too. Well, of course, because you're doing the podcast and look at all the books and everything. Of course <laughs> you are. And this is what sensitive people need to know. Shame, guilt, energy only has one defect. It dissolves in detection. Mm -hmm. How about that? Yeah. So that's why I'm an educator. With the knowledge you have, you go, you're nothing. Why? You don't have to have a thick skin. Right. You just have to have knowledge. Knowledge, I see. And that's why I, my books and my podcasts and all are giving you the knowledge that we did not get, ever receive. No, we didn't. We didn't. We are not stupid people. Shame, guilt made us stupid. Yes. Yes, it makes you stupid and a victim. Mm hmm But... With knowledge, you kick them out. Yes. Because you are smart, but you have to have the knowledge of who it is, what it does, and then the jig is up. Yes. Like, like um, uh, Dorothy and the Wizard. Uh, I was just going to say, just where, look where it comes from. You know, look at that person. Look at the, the scope, the the characteristics, the makeup that, of that person. And then that guilt and that shame won't be as powerful towards you. You'll realize that it's nothing because look it's where it's coming from. Of green smoke. Yeah. Put upon humanity to make us stupid. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line. But we're not stupid. We're beautiful people. We're loving. We're gorgeous. We, we can do so much. We can regenerate. Hello. 
you know, I regenerated. You can regenerate at any age, you know, it's never too late. It's never too late. But the shame guilt tells you you can't. Yes, it does. It pulls you down and says you, you have no hope. This is who you are, you know, and and you believe it. And that so shame what do you guilt say? controls you. you. Say no. Even if you don't believe me, I tell people, can you at least entertain me? Yeah. And try it. <laughs> Just right. say no. And you know how to say no. Do you believe it? Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. But it's a start. You've got to start somewhere. Right. You just got to say no and talk to your other feelings. Yes. And because I'm giving you the permission to kick it out. Mm hmm. Right. And my gosh, the, the my life changed like that. It was so instantaneous. Now, how do you feel about journaling? Did you find that journaling oh, helped you? Yeah, of course. Because I said, hi, depression. How are you? I write it. It's so much like it, it's better to write in the beginning because it's only your mind doing yeah. things. Hi, depression. How are you? Thank you so much for coming to see me. And when I do session with people, they write out for me and then they email it to me and I give them questions what it, to ask their little child, their depression, their anxiety. We have all this major family inside of us. And guess who's in charge? We are. The inner critic. Yes. You think you're in charge. No, you're not. The inner critic is in charge. The inner critic, I see. And a lot of people do inner child work, but unless you talk to the head boss, you're not going to get anywhere. Now, when you say inner critic, do you mean intuition? Your inner no, self? No, inner critic is your shame guilt producer that's inside of you. Like, you stupid jerk. Why did you do that? Of course, you're going to fail. Gotcha. And people say, I don't listen to that voice. I go, well... That's your only way out because he's in charge. He's the one, he's the wizard that makes the machine that brings all the smoke into you. So you got to make friends with him. Is that inner critic coming from the heart? Is it coming from the mind? Is it coming from past child from, experiences? It's, he has the job of protecting you. That's his protection. Mm -hmm. there, you were made that way to have a protection part inside of you. Yes. And your culture, your mother, your father, the priest, the teacher said, don't do that because you're bad and you better go to confession right. because you right. sinned and God died for you on the cross. How dare you? I mean, seriously, give me a break. <laughs> so what does your inner critic know? He only knows shame, guilt. So I'm got teaching you. you, you got to teach him, say, hello, Yes. The year 2022. Yes. And I work from love. And the inner critic says, love? What is that? Yes. So now I understand. To teach him. I understand now, the whole again, concept. Mm -hmm. My film, Out of Discord into Harmony, teaches you how to talk to your inner critic. Like we have a dialogue. Yes. It's all on film. Now, you told me you have three series. Tell me about these films. Well, I, I'm good film. Has three parts. Mm -hmm. And it's 15 minutes each because we, our mind, this is a whole different ball game we're talking about. And to sit for 45 minutes for a film, it's way too much. Yeah. So I'm good film.com. They're all free. And that will really help you to understand what I'm saying because it's a visual. Yes. That's why I went to film school. Because I was giving lectures like I'm talking to you and they go, Lois, what are you talking about? I don't know. <laughs> and I go, I guess um, I had a near-death experience somewhere along the line. So I think that I had a little bit more imagery in my life. Right. It doesn't matter. But I see things. And I said, oh, I'll just go to film school. Oh, it was much harder than I thought. But anyway. That's why I made a film and I say, people, just look at the film because unless you see it, you won't believe it. Right. And I think it's easier sometimes to visualize and understand something when you can visually see it and it's broken down, you absorb it and you get a better concept of it. You know, sometimes when you're speaking, you know, you're, you're grasping the concept, you're understanding what the person's saying, but you know, there are little holes here and there that aren't filled. You know, you still have questions and you're still trying to put everything together. So you have a clear understanding of the concept, you know, that's perfect. What I'm saying to you and to your wonderful audience 
is something they can't see. Right. Right. There's just no way. And I understand that because that's why I went to film school, because I used to give talks and lectures and they go, you're a wonderful speaker. But we don't know what in the heck you're talking about. <laughs> but I, I get it. I get it now. Now that you're explaining it, I, I'm seeing that basically, you know, we're born to an environment or a society where we're taught X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z. So we grow up thinking that this is the only way, this is the right way, this is what how I have to do it. So then you move on as time evolves, things change, you learn new things, you gain knowledge, and you realize that maybe some of these things that I was told really doesn't apply. You know, it's it's because of the environment I grew up in. But then you still carry that shame and guilt because that's how you were brought up. And you it no matter what you still carry it. But if you keep it there and you don't let go of it and move on, it's going to pull you down eventually to, and destroy you. After guilt, And there's nothing after guilt. Right. But that's why you have to teach your inner critic. Right. Because he's in, that's all I ever knew. Right. So you're like, hello, it's the year 22. Yes. And I also read Lois's things, and it makes sense. Can we talk about this? And go, heck no, because I'm in charge. I mean, you got to see my film, but it's, it's the critic on steroids. Oh, I'm definitely going to watch it. <laughs> it's um, it's I'm um, out of discord into harmony, as, and it's on I'm goodfilm.com website. Okay. So yeah, and kids love it because you know you're. I don't know how much you had this, but with kids, they talk about and um, George, their bear, or. Um, artists that the painter they have they know all their inner parts yeah so kids love this movie because it's talking to the kid part of you you know where I find people find the most guilt is they always want to please their parents even when they're adults they still they still feel like if they do something that they know their parents are in disagreement with they carry some guilt or shame on them because they go they go back to what oh, mom or dad wouldn't really like this, you know? And even though they're adults and they're living their own adult life, they still in their head, a lot of them need to please their parents. And they feel my parents will be ashamed of this or my parents, will, you know, and that guilt comes and that shame comes. Well, you just, you're eloquent. You just explain the inner critic. Yeah. So you got to part, excuse me, you got to speak to the part of you that's holding all those thoughts and say hello and it isn't a mindset thing it's a personal thing right you know when you say oh you have to change your mindset no you have to make friends with your inner critic got it mm -hmm. there's a difference yes okay the shame the inner your inner critic my king is very smart very wise he produces the shame he's not bad right he just has the puff of smoke from the wizard. Yeah, yeah. So you have to say, hi, wizard. Don't do that anymore. Right. I mean, it's it's logical. Yeah. And I can be very um, technical about the hip, you know, our parts of the brain and the reptilian brain. and But what does that do? Right. It's not going to help you. No, it's going to confuse most people. So let's talk about Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. Right. Make it simplistic and easy so people can comprehend it because everybody's seen the Wizard of Oz. So you kind of get the gist once you say that and you talk about Toto pulling the curtain. That was so true. Everyone thought he was this big, you know, tall, powerful person. And it ended up being this small a little grumpy guy. guy with the bald and gray and got. <laughs> <laughs> and people say, oh, your therapy is it. I said, when I do counseling, people laugh because yeah. it's so, we, the jig is up. Yeah. What does shame guilt do? It dissolves when we see it. Yes. How cool is that? We don't have to have an ax and kill it. We right. kill ourselves. We say, hey, shame guilt, I see you. It goes away. Exactly. The jig is up. Right. Isn't that fun? It is fun. And you know what? I have to say, when you do let go of the shame and you do let go of the guilt, it's like, ugh, can't even explain it. Your self-esteem boost is your health boost boost is you your feel mind, more gratitude, you love, smarter. focus. You yeah. Smarter. You get smarter because now you can focus and you can see things in life you never realized before. And That's you don't right. care so much about what other people think because it's what you think and what makes you happy as a person. When people do that to you 
they're throwing their shame guilt onto you. Exactly. And you go, no. Yes. (laughs) I used to say to my kids, can you say that another way? Yeah. I go, really? I go, really? (laughs) And a lot of times, you know, people, people, the best way for people to not have to look at themselves is to pinpoint other people and try to pick out their weaknesses or things that they did wrong or don't like and this and that because that may, it gives them a fact so they don't have to focus on themselves but then exactly you're very smart you're very, <laughs> well you got it you got it you just needed this do you see what this did i do All now I did was give you information yes and then it, you can run with it so right that's what i do i i do sessions and all that but I'm here to help people see it's a puff of smoke. Don't kill yourself over it. Right. Don't kill your kids. It's okay. Yeah. It just is. And then talk to your emotions. Our emotions are a life force. Yes. That's why people get old because their emotions are dying from carrying the shame. See, your emotions carry the shame. Right. Have you ever seen a person in a job and they're under so much stress, they get this job, it's a stressful job. Two years later, you look at the person and they look like they aged over 10 years. Because there's this stress Mm -hmm. is shame, guilt. Yes. Everything is shame, guilt. Yes. I get it. Everything. Depression, anxiety, not good enough, bullying. And if I would like to leave one comment, never, ever make a decision because of shame and guilt right i will do this if i don't i'll feel guilty wrong decision right very good advice okay and if you are in guilt call your friend call your girlfriend go outside go buy a uh, a bag of potato chips i mean it's healthier than being in guilt right chocolate bar You know, you got to be practical. You do. You do. Now you've written like three books. I, you know, I, I was looking on your website. It looks like you're an author of three books. Can you tell me a little about that? Okay. Uh, I'm As I'm talking to you and telling you these wonderful things, my clients came to me and they don't didn't have podcasts then. So I had to do the same thing. Right. I got so tired. I couldn't say it again mm-hmm. because I... A person came to me to make her job more satisfying. A mother came to me to help her children. Um, Someone else called me because they hated somebody. Everybody had a problem. But the answer was the same. If you're looking for health, if you're looking for self-esteem, or you're looking for your part, your um, soulmate, if you want to get more spiritual, it didn't matter what you wanted to do. Right. So I had to write a book. Because I couldn't say it anymore. <laughs> I'm serious. And I said, it's cheaper to buy my book than a couple hundred dollars here and there for me to tell you what's in the book. Right. So that's how the first book, Emotional Revolution, came. Right. And then um, I wrote from Spirit. So I have that. Now is the time on my um, website because that's like 911. If you're in guilt, just read this. Yeah. And then um, I have Soul Mirror cards because people are always in a hurry. They can pick up a card and read it Mm -hmm. Uh, what else do I have Uh, I forget what I have (laughs) um was it on your website it's all on my website under um bookstore okay so you can go there and but I think look in the films is the first step because unless you have a visual you don't know what I'm talking about right and you just close the book so I don't I You know, a lot of therapists like my book because it's more technical. Yeah. But you got to do the film. You got to do your own work first. You can't help a client out of shame unless you didn't get out of it. Yeah. Seriously. And I find too, like most, you know, when when a a a doctor, a person in the health um and in the healthcare field writes a book, a lot of times they use a lot of medical terminology and the concepts that they write about go over most people's heads because and it doesn't it makes you feel more shameful. 
Yes, because you're, you feel like you're stupid because you're not understanding what the message the author is trying to get across. So when it's in, when it's when it's in simplistic terms, you grasp it so much easier, and you learn, and 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 you get so much more value from the book itself. Yeah. Now my book is not technical, but it's just technical to try to understand it. You Got have you. to have a visual. Yes. And that's why I did the film. Good. And it's great animation. Um, it, it's just, you know, I'm I'm ready to make another one. It's so cool. <laughs> so it, it shows how it works. Right. But when you have a, when Doris Day said, you see, you believe what you see. Yes. And most people do. Most people believe only what they see, but there is more to life than what you see. Also, you know, there's but a this lot is of, a good foundation for what we're talking about. But yes. The, thank the you films. have always been mystifying. But now, um, you're very young, so I don't know if you remember the game Hot Potato. Yes, you know, I remember that game. Chairs, you have to get the right chair. That's what shame, guilt, energy is. People don't want it, so they keep throwing it to somebody else yeah. unconsciously. Mm -hmm. Did you ever see people getting really angry and hollering at somebody, and then they feel good? Yeah. That's because they released the shame, guilt, energy they were yes. found. Not all of it, but it makes it worse for them yes. and you. And most so, people carry it on for years and years and sometimes throughout their whole life if they don't get help. That's Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. It just, okay, it's nutrition and all the other stuff, but um, emotionally, you got to deal with the shame, guilt. They said you got to deal with your um, abuse. Well, you got to deal with shame, guilt. Yeah. You know, and what I one is therapies that are out there now to add the shame guilt work in it because if you don't get rid of the shame if you don't make the hole in your roof if you don't cover the hole in your roof you're still going to get rain in yep no matter how beautiful your bedroom is right if you don't fix it it's you're you're going to destroy it so you gotta close the hole in the roof right and it means you gotta get rid of shame guilt so yeah, I hope that analogy works. It does. I think you've made a very clear explanation throughout this whole entire podcast. You know, you've really you've used a lot of different analogies and a lot of different ways so people can actually grasp the concept. I grasp the concept, you know, and I now I under, have a full understanding of the concept of, of shame, guilt and how important it is to release the shame, guilt and ha listen to our inner critic and work make with friends ourselves. make friends make friends say, with your inner critic say what kind of food do you like mm -hmm. i mean you get very personal yeah it's like a friendship and they're they're he's my best friend now <laughs> really because then you get more psychic more intuitive because you don't have the shame guilt covering you when i was in sedona um several psychic you know, Sedona always has all the psychic people around. Yes. To me, and they wanted to see what I was all about. And so after they cleared the shame guilt that they were carrying, not all of it, I don't know if we ever can clear all of it, but a certain amount, they got more psychic. Yeah. The channel got clearer. Yes. That was a great revelation to me to see it actually in um, behavior that they became more psychic. Yes. It's like God's talking here and shame, guilt is interfering here. It's blocking you the connections. You can't, it's, it's a distorted connection. Yeah, it's a distorted connection. And that's what happens a lot of times people say something to you or you say something to somebody. It's very nice, but they distort it because of the shame they're carrying. Right. And they, why did you do that to me? And you go, I just gave you lunch. Yeah. What do you think? I'm poor. I can't have my own lunch. I'm going, oh my God. <laughs> it, they distort your behavior. Right. And that's where a lot of fights come in. Yeah. Because that's not what you said. Right. You know, would you like to share my lunch with me? What yeah. do you think? I don't have any food. I don't have any money. And you're going... I just wanted to share my chocolate candy bar. With you. <laughs> Jeez. 
but that's shame guilt right i understand it completely now can you tell people once again where they can find your website so sure lois hollis Dot com. That's L O I S H O L L I S dot com. And, and everything is on there. <clears throat> However, if you just want to see my film, I'm good film dot com. And okay. that leads to my website also. That leads to your website also. Very so good. I have a very wonderful person who connects all these things because I can do it. <laughs> oh, I do it. <laughs> but Seriously, I called the film I'm Good for a reason. I'm yes. good. I'm good. I'm goodfilm.com and that's it. And all of them are there. I like that. I like that a lot. It's easy. And yeah. I do give private sessions. You know, a lot of people want to look at the film first because it's, you know, but some people went to fast track. So I said, okay, I'll, you know, whatever is necessary. I want to be a resource for people. Right, exactly. You want to be there to help them. Because it took me a long time to figure this out. Yes. Well, it's it's not an easy process, you know. Healing yourself is 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 a is a step by step process. Now, your books are also on your website. Yes, everything's on my website. And do you sell your books on Amazon as well? No, uh, that got to be so confusing. I went, I can't deal with this. All right, so all your books are on your. Every just website. go to loishollis.com and you'll get everything. And I, Excellent. A couple podcasts are really more special than the other. They tell more things and I have it right there. And then I have three minute podcasts. I mean, just go there. It's a library. Excellent. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing this because everybody experiences shame or guilt. And, you know, so many people, it just, it takes a toll on a lot of people. I would say it takes a toll on a good percentage of society. It takes a toll on all of society. Yes. And that's why people can say, well, I don't have as much shame. You don't know. Right. Remember, shame is an eraser. Yes. It erases your brain. Yes. Okay. Shame is an eraser. It's a leech. It's a vampire. It's whatever yeah. you want to call it. It takes your power. It so does. So when you say no, you get the power back. Yes. And compliment you because in the conversation, you never said my shame or my guilt. You said the shame, the guilt. That's very important. Never own it. Never own it. I think you're the first one in maybe a hundred that didn't do that. <laughs> Listen to this lady. She's got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a pleasure having you on this show. And you know what? I'd love to have you come back and I would love to hear more about your near death experience. That sounds very intriguing. And I've, you know, I've read some stories about people who've experienced near death experiences and, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing how they describe what they went through and even during and afterwards the, the revelations and the things that they encountered and the things they learned from that, that moment when they went through it was unbelievable. They told me. Yeah. And, um, I didn't know that until my 40s or 50s and I've had three or four spiritual experiences after that well I'd love for you to come back on so the show and that's talk a about whole that. that's a whole podcast I mean yes it is a whole different <laughs> podcast so we can't talk about it today but I would love to have you back well, please do to, to please ha do. you know talk about that because that's a very interesting topic that I'd love and to talk about. What happened is that the more shame guilt I was able to release, the more spiritual experiences I was experiencing. Right. So it's a whole podcast in itself. And it's like, wow. Yeah. It's wow. It's a goodie. It'd be good. So you have my number. Yes. <laughs> and we will have you back on the show so we could discuss about that. And Thank you so much for, you know, giving us all this information, something that is so valuable to every single person on this planet. And I just thank you for what you do. You know, you do a, a lot of special things. Anybody who takes the time to help another person in my eyes is a saint, you know, and you really, you know, have done a wonderful job all these years, taking everything that you've gone through and using it to benefit others. So you took a tragedy in your life and you turned it into a positive, you know, event 
and you use that positive positiveness to help to others. spread it to other people because we all have to know this. Yes. They don't teach it in grade school. They don't teach it in grade school. They don't really teach it anywhere. You know, it's, and you know, you have to really learn, we have to learn from each other. It's all about helping one another. And that's the beauty of podcasting. So blessings to you. Yes. And I'll be back. Yes, you will be back. <laughs> <laughs> have a nice day. Okay.